So we are about to be on our way to the book barn. Hi. Hi. We've got our six boxes of books all packed up. Giselle had to go back up and grab her makeup. Yeah, and cause I'm like in Pimple City right now. <laughs> we uh, we're it's an hour and a half there at 7:30. We're gonna get there pretty much like right when it opens. Uh, we're gonna go to the science fiction and fantasy slash other stuff. Uh, place first, uh, that first building. Slash other stuff. Because uh, we want to grab our grab some stuff there, probably like have them set it aside for us, and then go. They start buying books at 11 a.m., so we can't do that until 11. So we have, we'll, two, we hours have, to, to browse. We have two hours to browse at the downtown store, and then we can uh, take <clears throat> these back up to the main store, up to the main barn, and uh, they'll give us some store credit for them. You ready? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Did you tell them what we were listening to? Yeah, we're about to start listening to, which one is this? I can't read it from here. Uh, the Case of the Peculiar Pink Fan. By Nancy <laughs> Springer. So this is Nola Holmes book four? Yes. Book four. I'm so excited. This is where the series like really gets good, so. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> we're on our way. We have finished in that building. We got lots of stuff. I, we got lots of really good stuff that I'm very excited about. We're gonna go head over to the main barn here. And we still have like 45 minutes until we can trade books in for store credit. Uh, I don't know how long that's gonna take. Don't know, we have to like get, probably get in line. Hopefully we'll be one of the first people in line. We're gonna go over to the main barn right now where they, where they do the book buying and we'll look around. They have fiction, nonfiction, uh, teen stuff, children's stuff, they have mystery, they have tons of stuff over there. So we'll just kind of hang out and collect books while we wait to go trade our books in.
just traded in our books. We got a little bit, they didn't take quite as much as I thought they would, and we got a little bit less than I thought we would overall, but still really happy we got like 80 something dollars worth of store credit, which is basically like $80 of free books. We've already found quite a lot of books that we both really want. So we probably will end up spending, we'll actually, we'll actually have to spend money today. How, how tragic. <laughs> section. The bad thing is that we only found it the last time we came. <laughs> and we've well, been here like we, seven we, times. We've both gotten a lot more interested in nonfiction anyway. Recently, I mean, so. I mean for the past few years I have I have been reading it though. But I'm sad that we only found it just recently. But now we know it's here and we're gonna go crazy. <laughs> break where we've hit two locations and are completely checked out of one and then the other one we like have everything we want we just didn't buy them because we didn't have our credit yet but we might as well have because we used all of our credit <laughs> at that first place because we bought so much stuff what oh, I forgot to mention that I literally made like this big long list of stuff I was looking for like just like a You're list of so precious. I'm, I've, it's mostly a list of authors. Some, a lot of it is uh, just authors, but some of it is uh, specific books and stuff. Yeah. But I was looking for authors, and I found a lot of the stuff that I wanted to find. I'm so dark. I found a lot of the stuff I wanted to find, which makes me really happy. I've, I've, this trip has already been like perfect, like yeah. the way because I've already found just like so much great stuff that I wanted. So I'm feeling really good. I feel like I've had like a medium haul so far. Like I did buy some books and found some books I'm really excited about. Like I found a book like all about like death culture for the past like 1,000 years in like Europe and stuff. Like books that are super interesting but that weren't like necessarily on my list. Chris has like bought so many that were on his list though. So that's really yeah, exciting. Yeah, I feel like this is like one of the first times that I've had like a really good haul and your, your haul is like good but it's not like... But, like I feel like you always find a lot more than I do, but I think yeah. I, I think I because I came prepared with a list. I like I I always have such a hard time when we come here scanning the bookshelves. I feel like I'm always missing something that I might have been looking for. But this time I made a list of authors. I went to all the different places in all the different sections that I wanted to, where all those authors would be, and. I found a bunch of the stuff that I wanted. And I mean, you so. usually we usually each make a list, but I feel like your list. I've only more... I only ever made a list one one other time. It oh. was like two years ago or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Because we usually do make lists, but I feel like it was more like much more extensive this time. And yeah. This. Th yeah. This year I didn't make a list at all, which like normally I do, but I was just. This week was a rough week, <laughs> and I just didn't have nearly as much time to do things as I expected to. I didn't get anything done this week that I wanted to, essentially. So yeah, this list, this year's list did not get made. I did like go over all my favorite books that I have marked on Goodreads. Every book that I've given five stars to on Goodreads, I did go over that list. So that like, I was just refreshing my mind of like what books I want to buy that I don't own that are favorites, obviously. I don't know, my brain. <laughs> I'm getting really hungry. But this is 
I don't know, like, I, since I read primarily from the library and I have my entire life read primarily from the library, I honestly barely own any of my favorite books, like, a very, very small amount. And so that's kind of what I want to work on over the next year or two, is just, like, building up that collection. And I was talking to Chris about this, like, we've pretty much have bought most of the books that we want like because we went so crazy with buying books the first few years that we were together and now i feel like our book buying has slowed down we go out to bookshop a lot yeah. less a lot of my my interest my interest in things has just grown so that's why i keep on like wanting to go out and get stuff but like i feel like i have a very good collection now that like i don't necessarily need a ton of books like you're saying our collection is filling itself up yeah and I feel like at this point we really just need to work on like getting rid of the things that aren't worth keeping so I yeah. feel like that's both what we're gonna work on this year as well is just like reading books that we just want are unsure of and then for the book bar next year hopefully we'll have a lot of books that we're just like yeah. unhauling because we tried them and we didn't like them well I mean I want to like everything that yeah. I read but like if I, I try something then we're gonna get if I, if I try something and I don't like it then I'll get rid of it but my my goal for main, mainly this year is just to read as many books that we own as possible yeah and I feel like I really fell into like the booktube trap when I started booktube like most booktubers do even so you did, did. I. a little bit yeah. uh, not as bad but because you kind of found a more specific niche and more like interesting niche which niche which was like the SFF community whereas yeah. like I was just kind of like in general like YA booktube so I own so many books that I don't know if I really have a full interest in anymore but like I still do somewhat to some degree as like a reader I want to try them at least so I need just need to like try those books and either keep them if I like them or get rid of them if I don't or even get rid of them even if I do like them if they're not something I feel like is an mm, like a top book for me so hopefully for the book barn next year we'll bring even more books that we didn't like yeah. here and get more credit. We didn't get as much credit this year as we did last year. I think they were being a lot more picky picky this year than they were last year, which makes me kind of sad. Yeah, because last year they almost they took everything, and then this year they there's several things they didn't take that I'm really surprised they didn't take. We but, have like two full know. boxes. We left. have yeah, like we have at least two full boxes left that they didn't like that were from scattered from the other boxes that we just kind of um, collected into two boxes of stuff that we just have to take to savers now, I guess. Yeah, but. which I find like super bizarre, but so now know. everything, every yeah, everything that we pay for now is out of pocket. So we're gonna we're gonna go to the get our stuff from the SFF place, go to the other two places. Hopefully, not spend too much more money and get too many more books. But I'm I'm still looking for some things. So yeah, we'll see. You we'll still see. have so many left on your list. Yeah, we'll see. We came to this place last year. It's called Skipper's Restaurant. Uh, there's not really a lot of places around here to eat that are like would fit into keto So we're just gonna eat here. I'll probably get like fish and chips have a little bit of a cheat day. It's fine. Yeah, we just got two things of fish and chips uh, I'm just gonna not eat keto because I mean it's not a vacation day or something like that or but it's like a long a long date day for the two of us and It's fine. I wasn't planning on not being keto, but there's not a lot of places like I said, so I'm pretty I'm pretty excited actually for fish and chips because I haven't had fish and chips in months. Got all of our science fiction fantasy books. Last place, the last stop of the day. We've gotten so many books already. 
But there's still more to get. There's still tons of fiction here to get. Classics. Lots of great stuff. Giselle is done. <laughs> this is so exhausted. I like need to leave right now. I can't function anymore. Yeah, she's she was like, I need to sit down for a second. I just like my whole body aches and my brain aches. We need to leave. I so. need to leave, yeah. I don't know. I did find some really cool books here, though. I found four books, five books that I wanted, all by Jane Stratton Porter, which makes me really excited. I've been wanting to reread some of her books, and then there's a ton of them that I've never even read, so that'll be good. I'm very excited. They're all, like, older editions from, I th didn't check when they were from, but I'm guessing from around when they were originally published, so around the early 1900s. I think so. Let me check. I feel like I have gotten so much out of this trip from the book barn. I've gotten so many things that were on my list. It's oh, crazy. Look at that. How much I've gotten that I wanted to get. And now I'm leaving so satisfied. That's great. What's that? What does it say? First edition. It's a first edition? Yeah. That's amazing. From 1925. Yeah, all of the, all of them <laughs> look kind of like this. Yeah. And go together really nicely. Yeah. I didn't so. even check the publication dates. I just saw Jean Stratton Porter and I don't own any of these. I, I think the only book I own by her is Girl of the Limberlost. I don't think I own any of her others. Um, maybe I own The Harvester? I can't remember. But like that would be it. And I haven't even read The Harvest. Oh, I thought that was my hair sticking up all weird. It's just the fire, fire hydrant. hydrant. Wow. <laughs> all in all, I would say this has been a very successful trip to the book barn. I don't know exactly how many books we've gotten. We'll count them when we get home. Maybe we'll show you some of the ones we're the most excited about. But I'm really happy. That was the only first edition, but they were all published between 1907 and 1925. So like I said, about when they came out early 1900s, which is pretty gosh darn cool. I've been yeah. to her house before in Indiana. Wally was on booktube. I actually filmed some videos like within the vicinity of her house. Those are all private though, so you can't watch them, sorry. And now it is time to leave and go home. Take the hour and a half long trip home. We'll listen to more. Anola Holmes. Yeah, and I think we can, we'll be able to finish it. I, I looked like 15 minutes before we got to the book barn and we were like exactly halfway through. So we're a little bit more than halfway through at this point. So we should definitely be able to finish it, which is awesome. Another book added to Christopher's list that he's read. And you. I mean, it's a reread though. Like, it's, it's, not like it's not like a new book though. It's not going to add my, to like my overall Goodreads stats of like how many books are on my shelves and stuff, but whatever whatever it's still a wonderful book are you liking the mystery so far yeah i like it yeah it's good i really like this one because it revolves so much around like etiquette and fashion and the language of fans and like all these things mm -hmm from like the turn of the century like i think it's really fun that it incorporates all those things i when i was a kid i took like Probably when I, I think I was nine or ten, I took like a fan etiquette class, just like learned what, how to use fans and like what different things meant and stuff. It was really fun, and so like when I read this, I was just like, oh, that's so nice. Like, yeah. I love that I already sort of know this. Anyway, yeah. let's go check out. And <laughs> you found upstairs, I see. Yes. <laughs> Have you really? Yeah. So you're done. <laughs> so here are all the books that we ended up bringing home with us to the book barn, sorted into categories at the moment. We need to scan them into our system and then obviously put them away. We also need to put all these books away as well. We just uh, scanned those last night. Uh, these are all the books we've collected over the past several months. They've just kind of been piling up. So over the next week or so, we will uh, likely be spending some time scanning our books and rearranging our shelves. Uh, that might take like a couple weeks for us to really complete it all because we're also, there's some stuff happening in February 
that uh, I'm gonna, I guess might as well tell you about. We're going to go hang out with Steve, go to one of the Boston Public Library book sales. Hopefully a couple weeks after that he'll be coming here and we're going to go to a book sale that's sort of near us that we've been to several times. We haven't been to it in a little while, but uh, it's really, really good. It's a really good sale. So, and we think Steve will really like it. We've never taken to him, taken him to it before. So, we get to hang out with Steve a couple times in February, which I'm really excited for. And we'll be bringing more books home. So, we need to rearrange some things in here. Luckily, because of our new shelves we bought, we have lots of empty shelf space that we can fit stuff into. So, I just wanted to quickly mention just like a couple of my favorite things, I guess, that I got from the book barn. I mean, I'm super excited about everything I got. I had lists for like a bunch of genres that I was interested in. I'm so interested in reading like all, all the genres right now. I I want to read everything right now. And I, I haven't felt like I've wanted to read this much in a really long time. I haven't felt like reading this much since like a couple years ago when I read over 200 books in a year or whatever. I'm really hoping I can get to a lot this year. I am super in the mood for reading, so. A couple of things that I got that were my favorites, that were like my favorite finds for the day, I guess. Uh, I found, well, I already, I've already read both of these, but I found Magpie Murders, and The Word is Murder by Anthony Horowitz. These are fantastic. I loved both of them. I read them both last year. Uh, I just, I keep thinking about them. I keep thinking about how well done he, does his mystery fiction. I can't wait for him to write more. Uh, there's a sequel to this coming out this year. It's actually already out in the UK, but it doesn't come out until like July here in the US, I think. Uh, it's called The Sentence is Death. But uh, I think I want to reread these again this year because I just think about them a lot. And I'm really happy to have the physical editions of them because I we did not own them already. Obviously. And then a couple other favorites. Uh, I, I just read Motherless Brooklyn. This is one of the first books I read this year, and I really, really liked it. Really enjoyed it a lot. I listen, actually listened to the audiobook, and I want to read more by this author. Uh, he has some books that, like, have some lower ratings and stuff, which is interesting to me. I don't know. I've he I have heard about this book for a really long time, and I'm really glad I read it. There's a movie coming out uh, based on this book this year. And so I, I picked up a couple of his other books. I got The Fortress of Solitude. It actually has like a shiny plastic thing on it, so I guess it was a library book at one point. I might keep that on. I don't know. I was thinking about taking it off, but I think I might just keep it on. But I also might take it off. I'm not sure. I haven't decided. I kind of I kind of hate the plastic, but it keeps it nice, obviously. And then this is his newest book. It literally just came out in November. Just came out a few months ago. Uh, it doesn't have very good reviews. People haven't been liking it very much, it seems, uh, from, the, the, from the reviews I've seen online of it, because... Uh, after I finished Motherless Brooklyn, I was like, oh, I should maybe get another audiobook of his. And I was thinking about getting this newest one. I mean, I love detective fiction. That's what I'm most in the mood for right now. I think I'll probably end up just reading this physical copy. I, I mean, we spent all of our store credit, but we, we didn't spend too much past that. So I feel pretty good about getting a brand new, uh, his brand new book today. So, And then I just finished also uh, The Overstory by Richard Powers. And so I got one of his other books. It's The Echo Maker. And this one won the National Book Award. And I don't know anything about it. I just really like the overstory. It was really beautifully written. And I think will stick with me over time. I think that's a book I'll definitely have to reread in the future. And will probably appreciate the more that I think about it. So i uh, really happy I got, got that. And then this book, I've heard a lot of really good things about uh, after doing some research online. I'm really super into wanting to read books set in New York recently. Uh, I've been trying to find as many books as possible that are set in New York. I bought Washington Square by Henry James today. We have a bunch of books here that I already have that I want to read very soon. Uh, but then I, I heard about this book uh, when I was doing some research on some really good New York books set in New York and stuff. And uh, this is Lush Life by Richard Price. Uh, I don't know a ton about it. I just know that it's supposed to be a very good book that is set in New York City. I didn't expect to find it. Uh, and so, like, I was really surprised that I found it. It just kind of jumped up at me. I was I was looking at a different author, the different author's stuff, and this was just, like, sitting there. And I was like, oh, I recognize that cover. And I grabbed it, and I was really excited about it. So, And then just a couple more. Uh, I couldn't believe this was this was the very first thing I picked up in the very first building, A Veil of Spears by Bradley Bullier, the third book in the Shattered Sands series. Love the first two books in the series. Great main character, great writing. I love his writing. 
I think I either reviewed one or both of those books on my booktube channel, but I loved them and I couldn't believe this third book was there. It just came out not too long ago and I'm definitely reading this as soon as I move back to reading more fantasy and science fiction. Uh, same with this, The Red Knight. I haven't read anything by Miles Cameron yet. This is a series that I've heard a ton about and a series that I've been wanting to read for a while, The Trader Sun Cycle. I've been wanting to read this for a while because there's a lot of SFF booktubers who talk about this and really love it. And I love this edition. Look at the lovely deckled edges and French flaps. I was surprised uh, to see it there because I have never seen any of these books there before. Anyway, we got a total of 94, I think. I, 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 just, I just counted, I can't remember exactly, but I think it was 94 books in total. And Giselle is live streaming right now. I am, hi. How's it going? Good. We, I counted them, we bought 94 or 95 books, I can't remember exactly. Is but. that including the Signet books? Yes. How many of those were there? I don't, I don't know. Okay, I think there were around 20, so we bought around 70 books today. Well, those don't count. <laughs> They were like twenty five cents. They were eight dollars. Yeah. It was a doll it was a dollar for eight of them. Yeah. And I wouldn't have bought them if they weren't, so I don't think they'd count. Well we did a good job. <laughs> we got a lot of books. <laughs> yeah, we did. Alright, so to end off this vlog, I'm going to share the books that I got that I'm the most excited about. I mean, I got a lot of books. I got especially just like a lot of like romance books, which is always really fun. But I got some other really cool things. Some of them were just, most of them were just like impulse buys. Like, I don't know what this book is. I've never heard of it and it's not on my TBR, but like, I want it. And I feel like those are some of the most fun ones to do. So anyway, let's talk about <laughs> some of the ones that I'm just like excited off of right off the bat. So I have three books that I've read. The Sum of All Kisses by Julia Quinn. This is one of my favorite Julia Quinn romances and I really want to reread it. <laughs> it's adorable. I really like the whole Smythe Smith Quartet except for the second book but that's the third one. <laughs> and then I also got um, these two which are so shiny. Slightly Sinful and Slightly Dangerous by Mary Balog. I want to complete my collection of this series so I picked those two up. I think I own three or four, so like I'm either have my completion, my collection done or nearly done. So I was just like really excited to find them. And then I got a whole slew of Nancy Springer, like vintage Nancy Springer books. Uh, Nancy Springer is the author of Anola Holmes, which we listened to today. And so these are some of her books. So these two go together. This is the, f the first book and the third book in this series, The White Heart and The Black Beast. And then the middle book that I'm missing is The Silver Sun. And there's also more books in the series, but I picked these two up. This one, cause it was like in totally perfect condition. They had some of her other books in like pretty bad condition, but I'm excited to read this. And I really like Nancy Sprinker's more like modern work, even though it's still historical fiction, more like modern writing. So I hope I will like her older stuff as well. And then, and I've heard of those and I've looked into those before. And then another one that I've heard in, heard of before and looked into before is I Am Morgan Le Fay. I actually have I Am Mordred right here, which is like the companion novel. So I was really excited to find this one and I want to read that probably in April. I want to read it in a few months. So like that's perfect. And it's also available on audio through the Audible Romance package. So I'm very excited about that. Obviously an Arthurian legend retelling. And then I have three that I'm sure I've heard of, but I don't remember. I have gone through all of her like backlist before and like looked into them. I don't still remember these ones. This one is The Hex Witch of Seldom this i don't know this cover and everything it's just like very interesting and then there's also this one which is lark on the wing and then this one has the most interesting cover <laughs> it's metal angel oh my gosh this cover just is is a cover so <laughs> i was just really excited to find some vintage nancy springer and i'm super excited to read them and they're all in pretty decent condition so i'm very happy about that and then of course i already mentioned these but these are the jean stratton porter that i picked up i was really hoping to find something like this in the old book collection in the book barn i've found things like elizabeth von arnhem before i think i found some jean stratton porter before like things like that and I love finding them. I was really hoping I would find some and I'm really excited that I found these Jean Stratton Porters. So the ones that I found are At the Foot of the Rainbow, Michael, Michael O'Halloran. Is that who said that? Michael O'Halloran. <laughs> daughter of the Land, Her Father's Daughter, and Keeper of the Bees. And yeah, I've never read any of these. I've only read a couple of her books. Like I've obviously read like uh, the 
The Girl the Limber Lost and Freckles and I think I've read maybe one other by her. I really want to read The Harvester and Laddie and I think I own I I think I own one or two of those. And then I want to read some of her other books. I hope I still like her. I haven't read her in a couple years. And then here are some of the more like impulse buys. Like these, I was all excited to find. Like I've already like read books by these authors before. These were all like total impulse impulse buys, but they work really good. So I'm excited. <laughs> so this one is The Hour of Our Death. And this is the classic history of Western attitude of of Western attitudes toward death over the last 1,000 years. And this is by Phil Philippe? Philippe? I don't know. Aries? <laughs> I don't know. I was just like reading about it and it just like is something that sounds like it will be right up my alley. This one also just like looks really fascinating to me. And this is The Secret History of Domestic... How do you say that word? Domestic... Do Domestic, domesticity? 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 This is The Secret History of Our Domesticity. I'm not good at saying that word. Um, by Michael McKeon. And private, Public, Private, and the Division of Knowledge. And, I don't know, I feel like this will probably talk a lot about, like, women in the home, which is something else that I'm very interested in reading about. And just, like, what people have done through the ages at home and stuff it just it looks really good looks at my alley it's uh, most of them it's so big it's it's not actually that long uh. a lot of the end are just like references and stuff so the actual book is only 700 pages which isn't honestly that bad like it looks like this one is 700 pages and then this one is almost 900 or over 900 and this one is bigger so like it's actually not that bad for like how thick it is okay let's speed through these next ones the world of king arthur a new history of arthur and the Arthur arthurian legend the latest archaeological discoveries early texts and in in inscriptions medieval romances mallory tennyson and Wag wagner this one came out in 2000 i really I really want to do like an Arthurian like reading month where I just read like lots of like King Arthur things and this looks like it will be like a perfect like little like delve into just like behind like the myths and stuff which will be very like interesting and like a nice like off-center thing. Um, Olive made a video during nonfiction November of like reading pairing nonfiction with fiction and stuff and she I know she's doing it she did it in January with like um, a book about reading Little Women and then a book about Little Women and like this impact it's had on our American society and stuff and I feel like this will like give a similar like taste as that. Anyway it also just reminds me of Karen and some like a book that she would have on her bookcase like this is totally something she would have had which I don't know I just really want to like and it's it's simple as well it's not like overly sometimes you look at these books and they're this big and then it's just like walls and walls and walls of text and with very few pictures and it like <laughs> freaks my brain out and I'm like I can't do this it's too hard but like this looks fairly simple but like I'll still get a lot out of it and then this one is called Cities of the World and it is really cool it's just cities over time and then it has like pictures of the cities in it and I think this will just like give me a good taste of like history and geography which is something I really need help with is geography and it has all these beautiful pictures and then it just has little like sections about different cities. I think this looks fascinating. It's definitely not something I th think I would like read like start to finish but it's beautiful and I just like would like to be able to like sit down and open it and like read about some of them. Anyway, the final book I'm going to talk about today that I'm just super excited that I found. I mean I'm ha really happy with everything that I found. But I'm particularly excited about this one. And this is Byron, Child of Passion, Fool of Fame. And this is by Benita Elsler? I don't know how to say words. Uh, this is obviously a, a giant biography about Byron. I don't know. I just, like, I've always found Byron to be such, like, an interesting personage. But I've never actually felt, like the desire to actually really learn about him like I've definitely like learned about him before but like he's also like kind of a scumbag I feel like and so I've never like felt that like need to look into it but like the more I read like 
honestly, like, all my historical romances and stuff, and the more, like, get into, like, that time period and culture and stuff. And also, I just reread Frankenstein last month. Yeah, I reread Frankenstein in December, and, like, reading that, like, I really want to get, like, a look at... I really want to read a ton of, like, Mary Shelley biographies as well, because she was, like, so interesting. But I thought it'd be really interesting to read some Byron biographies as well since like I haven't I don't know as much about him as I would like to for how much I enjoy that time period so I definitely want to pick that one up and maybe I'll find some other like Byron biographies or something so anyway those are my most excited books those are the books I'm most excited about those are the books I'm most excited about that we got today like we got so many great things and I'm, we're just like so blessed that we we're able to do this and it makes it like feasible because it's something that we only do like once or twice a year is we'll go down and we'll just like buy a lot of like really like fun and exciting books and I definitely feel super blessed I know Chris does as well that we have that like opportunity I'm and so I miss this place whenever we move away yeah we were talking about that and I was like we should just move to Connecticut and he's like Connecticut's just like Massachusetts but a little bit lower down <laughs> like it's essentially the same so we won't be moving to Connecticut but I'm like oh, it would be so cool but anyway we definitely feel our like privilege and our blessings with this and it was really fun I don't know if it fully got shown so I'm gonna do that real quick just to end this vlog off these are all <laughs> these are all like the signet regency romances that I picked up I've never read one before I think they sound super fun and really lovely and they're all in perfect condition and they were eight for a dollar so one little i went a little crazy and i think i like spent like 250 or three dollars on this huge stack so i got some fun christmasy romances maybe i'll read next christmas and also it's it's something i haven't like really addressed recently either but i i'm constantly talking about how I primarily read audiobooks and how if something's not on audio, I'm not going to read it and all stuff like that. And that's just been to like, that's just what I've been in the mood for. And last week I totally unprompted and unnecessarily read like two physical books and I have like two more, like, well, they were eBooks, but I was like physically reading and I'm just so in the mood to physically read books right now. I don't know what's going on. But I have a feeling that I'm just going to be, like, doing this a lot more, like, reading physical books, which is so exciting, but it's something that, like, I haven't done very much since, like, 2014 is, like, the last time I, like, really read a ton of physical books that weren't, like, manga or something. So, anyway, I may be doing more of that. So, now we need to scan all these books, get them into our library system, and then we can put them on the shelf so it'll be so much fun. All right. Is that all? All right, that's all. We will see you in our next vlog. Thank you ever so much for watching. We appreciate it much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>